I'm now the LSO co-chair, or one of the LSO co-chairs here at the MEF, but uh, I was until earlier this year the services co-chair, so you're going to see uh, a fair bit of me this morning, I'm afraid. Um, but we're going to start off just by looking at a, an overview of, of, of MEF 3.0 services, and I'm glad there's so many people in the room this early in the morning because uh, this is really the sort of the framework and the foundation for a lot of the rest of what we're going to talk about during the morning. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, just sort of where do services fit in? We like to split our, our, our work into these sort of four segments. Uh, first of all, we define the services and their assured services uh, at all layers, so uh, optical, k Ethernet, IP, SD-WAN, uh, and right up to applications. Uh, we then have the LSO APIs, that's the automation and orchestration of those services, both within service provider domain and, and across domains. Uh, we have the certification of those services, um, uh, which is all now cloud-based, uh, so you can repeatedly certify as many times as you like. You can make it part of your test uh, uh, process. Um, and then we have the community, and that's sort of the, the expanded community, both of those participating and working on the standards, uh, helping with the certification, helping with the sort of examples and, and uh, example implementations of those. Um, and uh, we have an uh, enterprise advisory council to help get some uh, enterprise perspectives. So we have this big sort of community of people all helping uh, with all of this work. So we'll start off just by sort of thinking about, well, what do we mean when we say a service? It's a very overloaded term in the industry, um, uh, and you'll find lots of different definitions. But in MEF, when we talk about a service, this is what we mean. It's a technical definition of functionality. So um, we, uh, when we talk about services, we sort of take away all of the business layer of pricing and quotes and all of that. And we just focus on what's the technical definition of, of what's being delivered. Uh, it's always provided by one organization to another. So um, in MEF, when we talk about services, we're always talking about between organizations. Um, obviously, you know, internally within an organization, you might have different parts of the organization providing services to each other, but we don't, um, when we talk about MEF services, we're not thinking about that sort of context. Um, we always describe services in terms of what they look like to the user of the service. So we call that externally visible behavior. So we, we don't try and define how it's implemented, what you do inside. We define what it looks like on the outside. So we treat the service as a black box. Um, and it's independent of the service implementation. So you know, we don't want to constrain service providers as to how they deliver services. Um, the example we always like to use is that um, you know, if you're your service provider, you can deliver your service using supersonic carrier pigeons, if you like, and so long as it meets all of the externally visible behavior, uh, so it looks to the, the user of the service the same, then that's just fine. Um, so um, the supersonic carrier pigeons are always something that we have at the back of our mind when we're defining services. Uh, so how do we go about doing that then? Um, we sort of start off by trying to describe service attributes. So these are the sort of aspects of the service that need to be agreed. When you, when you want to buy a service from someone, we look at all of the sort of things that you need to agree in order to define that service. And when we say agree, uh, again, there's a sort of subtle definition of agree. It, 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 we don't constrain how things are agreed. So you might agree by the service provider says, here's what it is, and you click a button that says OK, or you sign the bottom of a document. That's one way of agreeing. Uh, you might sit in a room and negotiate a whole load of stuff. That's another way of agreeing, sort of the opposite end of the spectrum. So again, when we say agree, we're not implying anything about how that works at a business layer. We're just saying that some, some way the two sides have to agree on this thing in order to define how the service is going to behave. Uh, so once we've sort of got down all the service attributes, um, we then try and use those to define some particular services. So this is where you see for KR Ethernet, things like EPL and EPLAN and all of those things fall out. Um, uh, we've generally found that there's some topics that need a little bit more in-depth um, uh, investigation and work. So they tend to be things like uh, service OAM, uh, service activation testing, control protocols at various layers. Um, multiple classes of service and how to deal with those and bandwidth profiles. So we, we tend to sort of have a, a series of documents on those sort of more in-depth topics. Um, and then we obviously want to feed into the orchestration side. So we use the service attributes and the service definitions to create information models and data models. Uh, and from there, uh, those go on into uh, the APIs. And then at the end of the day, uh, all of that, the service definitions and the APIs are what feeds into the certification program. So that's a sort of another, another sort of way of looking at the outline of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start off 
on the left to talk about services and service attributes and service definitions this morning, uh, and then we'll go along and talk about the LS LSO, so that's sort of covering the information models, data models, and APIs, um, and then the certification part of it is, is what's on the agenda for this afternoon. So I want to sort of look a little bit about the different types of services, and this is uh, independent of what sort of technology layer we're talking about, L1 or K Ethernet or IP. Um, we, we split the services into two sort of different types. So we have subscriber services. So this is services provided to the end user, to an enterprise typically. Um, and why do we want to define those? Well, we want common terminology so that you know, if, if you're a subscriber and you're going around trying to compare services from different providers, you know, they're all talking about them in the same way, using the same terminology. It allows you to easily compare different things because you've got a standard set of service attributes and you can just see what the values are that are on offer. Um, it obviously means that we can uh, certify them, which is good for subscribers because you know, they can go around and, and have some confidence that the service being delivered is what they actually think it is. Uh, and of course, it assists with automation and standardized automation. Um, it's very hard to automate something if you don't know what the thing is to start with. Um, and then we have operator services. So this is sort of the wholesale side of it, uh, services that are sold and bought between service providers and between operators. Um, so in this example, um, I've no idea whether it and actually has a relationship with Telecom Italia. This is just an example. I should make that clear. Um, uh, but here, AT&T, let's suppose, uh, doesn't have their own presence in Rome, um, and so they've contracted with Telecom Italia to reach the subscriber's uh, location in Rome. Um, so this is what we call an operator service. Uh, so it's essentially sub subcontracting part of the end-to-end -end service that's being sold to the subscriber and, um, uh, and, and buying that. Uh, essentially, it's normally an access piece, although it can also be transit. Um, uh, and really, the, you know, the key thing, the key reason why we want to define those uh, is to enable uh, automation and, and orchestration of those um, and to do that in a standard way. Um, so if we look at the, uh, the roadmap here, uh, you can see there's uh, a lot that's been done and a lot that's still being done. Um, and not even shown on the roadmap here is the stuff that's still to do. Haven't, haven't started yet, but you know, have, have in mind. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this in detail, but you, know, you can see that there's, uh, there's a, lot, a lot being done. K Ethernet, of course, we have a huge amount that's already been done. It wouldn't possibly fit all on this little box, um, but those are the, the sort of main ones. We're going to delve into each of these in a bit more detail in the presentations that follow. Um, and you, know, you can see as well, there's a lot of active work uh, going on. Um, again, we're going to talk about some of these in more detail, uh, and, and I guess this is the point where I should say for the first time, it's going to be a recurring theme that if you're interested in these things and you want to see them progress um, and you're waiting for them, then come and help. Um, you know, the work of the committees uh, that produce all these standards only goes as fast as, as the number of people who come and participate and help drive them forward. Um, so we have a, we have a, a members meeting uh, at the end of this week. Uh, well, we're going to be working on all of these things in the, in the dark blue color, and that's just in the services committee, well, and the applications committee. Uh, there's, there's a whole load of stuff going on in LSO and certification as well. Um, so uh, it's really, we're really dependent on uh, people coming to help participate and help drive these things forward um, to, uh, to make speedy progress on them. Um, okay, so that's sort of the, the overview. Um, and we're going to dive in now to the different technology layers. Um, so I'm going to cover K Ethernet and IP, uh, and then I'll hand over to uh, David to cover optical, and, uh, and then we'll move into SD-WAN and, and the other services after that. <laughs> 